inside the Del Monte politics and what exactly is behind the renewed push to impeach Kiambu Governor Wamatange. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Bold Analysis. And in this podcast, I want us to get to Kiambu because the Kiambu Governor Wamatange in a scathing attack on William Ruto has confronted the executive about the recent push by the national government to give some land to some individual, some powerful individuals on the Del Monte. And without much ado, I want you to listen to the governor speaking here. Tomapia <laughs> Leonie <laughs> Uh, Wamatangi is opening up on how some individuals, powerful individuals from the national government, have been pushing him to give part of the land that was ceded to the county um, for some individual project. But I want you to, I want us to get the deep, I want us to get deep into this issue about Del Monte. And that is the reason why actually Wamatangi is being uh, hounded out of office. In 2018, the former Kiambu governor Waititu piled pressure on the Del Monte company when the Del Monte wanted to renew their 99 years at least on the 8,000 acres of land in the vast uh, Del Monte farm. And when Waititu pushed, he finally renewed the lease but some acres, a percentage of that acre of land, I think that was 600 acres, was given to Kiambu County and he penned that lease document. And of course the land was, the, the lease was renewed. We understand his push or rather his initial decline even to renew that lease document could be the reason why, one of the reasons why it was handed out of office. Now. After he surrendered 600 acres to the government, to the county government of Kiambu, Waititu would then want to push, or rather there was a, another push for part of that land to be given to some settlers. People who had been ejected from that land, people who had been ejected were actually landless. So there was part, and a court even awarded some 70% land to be used for settling squatters. But that went and there was a bit of that silence. Now, fast forward, during the recent Mount Kenya tour, when President William Ruto met with a host of leaders in the area, um, in Sagana State Lodge, it was reported that Kiambu and Muranga were actually in a tussle because Kiambu also has 1,400 1, acres that had been shelved from the Del Monte that had also been given. And there was a plan to build, uh, government had planned to build industrial aggregation parks, EPZ, and affordable housing. But there was a push for that construction to be on Muranga or Kiambu. Kiambu has demanded that they have the largest population and they also have access to thicker uh, uh, digital smart city and so the industrial park needed to be constructed on the other side of Kiambu. So there's a push and pull between the two counties. However, according to Wamatangi, and there was also the issue of affordable housing, Wamatangi is saying 
that some powerful individuals have demanded that that land be forcefully given to them, uh, forcefully be given to them, for especially construction of the affordable housing, but not the industrial park in the EPZ. So the challenge here is, and he has said, that he will only give the title deed in the documents, he will only avail the land for the construction for the project, especially for Kiambu residents. And according to him, it's a pure case of land grabbing. Now, let me tell you, 10 days ago, there's a group of um, some elderly members from Kiambu who raised and have been demanding that the push, or rather what they were given by parliament and the court and uh, the land court, for them to be settled in part of that land, be given to them. But when William Ruto toured the region, no one spoke about this. And I wanted to listen to these uh, members, uh, uh, these old, um, these quarters complaining, demanding that they should also be compensated. Tumaini letu ni kuu na kwa sababu tumeona ya kwamba sasa mambo yote ya mekuisha. Na kwa sababu ya mekuisha sasa tungeomba yeye mwenyewe aeleze parliament committee ambayo inawasilisha hii maneno iweze kukaa chini na both parties ili tuweze kumaliza kwa sababu eh, parliament haina jambo lolote ambalo iko nalo katika lile shamba pia vile wataongea na vile tuko pamoja tutakuwa tumeridhika kwa sababu asitupatie kangata pamoja na, na, na Muranga County Government kwa sababu hao wako na interest pia asitupatie wa matangi pamoja na Kiambu County kwa sababu wako na interest yule ambaye angeweza simama katika haya mambo yote na kuonyeshana mambo itaenda vizuri ni wakati ni wakati parliament implementation committee ambayo ni ya parliament wakikaa chini na sisi tutakuwa tumeridhika kwa sababu tutaona ya kwamba ugavi wa kila kitu itaenda sababu kulingana na mapenzi yetu lakini tukipenda hii sababu yetu rais wetu utugawia 70% ya ile tulipewa na bunge na tukapewa na koti governor Wamatangi has stood his ground against William Ruto and is saying he is not going to avail that land for individuals to do invest their own to make their own investments where the land belongs to the county so it is something that has been going on and I remember the I think the miracle senator someone raised a question I raised this statement with some time back that when Wamatangi was given a dress down by the president uh, during the Mount Kenya tour, that he was told he is a late coming UDA party, and because he has declined to give that uh, to give that land uh, to, to open the way for that project, he should go back and read the UDA manifesto, the bottom up economic model, because he came he came late, he does not understand the UDA agenda and was vilified in front of other leaders being asked to surrender the documents of the said land. So that is why he's coming out in public and saying, no, look here, I am not going to heed, I'm not going to bow to that pressure. That's why he has gone back to the voters. Now, the guns have been traded against Wamatangi, and I really sympathize with him. I don't know, I don't really think he's going to make his way, uh, he's going to survive this onslaught, because... Recently, the, the Tutu North Member of Parliament, Kagombe, had a scuffle with the police and allegedly they were sad. And I think this is what you can, you can see in this video. He had a scuffle with the police and allegedly he was making some very wrong statements against Umatangi about, I think it was just about the same impeachment story that has been going on. And there seems to be some leaders. Kagombe is a very close associate of William Brut. I remember there are some two foreign trips that President Ruto has held and he's been accompanying William Ruto and he's amongst the members of parliament from Kiambu who have then gone against the governor and is fighting the governor on this end. So it, the, the day is cast. I, I don't, whenever, whenever, even though Wamatangi might be very genuine and might mean well in the way he's pushing this agenda, 
but it's been vilified because if you look at Moses Kuria, who is a trade CS, also wanted to be the governor uh, by, by then, is a, strong, is a strong associate of William Ruto. So how is he going to get, make his way out of it? If you look at P.S. Hinga, who is in charge of the affordable housing, is been one-on-one -on -one with William Ruto. So it's not going to be a very easy war for the governor to win against some of these big boys against William Ruto. Now, um, it is then seen very openly that the new MCS hunt, hunting Wamatangi, they are charged from the big office. You know, impeachment don't just happen. There have been a lot of discussion about bursaries. You know that the Wamatangi has failed to give them bursaries. Now, this is the second push. There was the first phase of Wamatangi impeachment that survived. And then now there's this other one, by also the same MPs, he's been, you know, he's been asked about, he bought some chicks. And there was questions about how he bought chicks from the cultural research institution at 1,000 each. You know, I don't know. So, bit of the corruption, charges, abuse of office, and also something on um, and also something on the bursary. All this seems to be trumped up charges to make sure that Omatangi is pushed out. And I pity because Omatangi, before he even crossed over, he was a very close associate of Uhuru Kenyatta. By the way, he was a very strong loyalist, Uhuru Kenyatta loyalist, before he crossed over the other end. So, even he is going to survive this onslaught, it's not something that is going to be very easy. But remember, Kiambu is the only county, it's not the only, it's a county where, I think that's Kiambu and uh, Nakur, where no governor has served twice. I think also Nairobi. Kiambu, Nairobi, Nakuru. No governor has served twice. Waititu served his one term, not Waititu. Kiambu, uh, Kabogo served his one term. When Waititu came in, Waititu served a half term. Then Asha Nyoro, the Nyoro also served the remainder of the term and he was kicked out and now Wamatangi. I don't know whether Wamatangi is going to survive. And if he survives, maybe some one term now. Mount Kenya capture will thrive if the leaders go, do not become very bold. Then we will get more Wamatangis and more Wamushombas confronting William Button saying, this is a no. I think Mount Kenya leaders should also be able to challenge the status quo. But if you sit down and have that blind psychophancy, the Mount Kenya capture is coming back strong. The right threats of Mambo Matatu are part of the wider scheme to make sure that if someone like Governor then hears President saying three threats, you either give, go to jail, or go to heaven, what's going to happen? I think we are treading very dangerous route. And on this one, it's upon the Governor to make his way, decide. Are you going to give it to the big boys or you'll also stick your ground? At the end of it, it's interests at the table. Thank you.